Greetings to you all, my brothers and sisters, for another looking at God's Word heart to heart, listening to the voice of the Creator. So this is God speaking heart to heart version. So we're starting off in 1 John 4 and 1, examining what we hear. This is from the Message Bible. So my dear friends, don't believe everything that you hear, but carefully weigh up and examine what people tell you, for not everyone who talks about God comes from God, for there are a lot of lying preachers that are loose in the world today. So many people think that they can assume that they should do whatever they are told to do as long as the one that's given the instructions is a person of authority. And they say that this one is a renowned leader and therefore he must be speaking the truth. But that's not always how it works. When we review this verse properly, it actually says, let every soul be subject unto the higher powers. For there is no power but of God, and the powers that be are ordained of God. So this is Romans 13, 1. And the one that we just read in 1 John 4 and 1, it tells us to test the spirits, that you don't just run with whoever you meet or whoever you listen to or do whatever you are told by just about anybody. But we must first examine where that authority is coming from, but it could be from the devil. So we don't want to be deceived. So we have to be careful about this. So God can choose a leader and the leader can go against God and turn against him. So this, there's many verses all throughout Scripture that are giving us many examples of those who went against God even though they were chosen of God. Even King Saul, uh, where Samuel the prophet gave very definite instructions to King Saul that he was to go to war against Amalek and to destroy everything that was connected to them, but with no exceptions at all. But Saul went out as he was told, and he had a victory, and he utterly destroyed all that was despised and worthless, but he ended up sparing what he considered what was choice and valuable. And not only did he spare Agag, the wicked king, but he also spared the best of all the sheep and the oxen and all that was good. So what was God's response to Saul? He said to him through the prophet Samuel, in 1 Samuel 15 11, he says, I regret making Saul king, for he has turned back from following me, and he has not carefully performed all of my commands completely. So even listening to this white verse, it actually shows us that not every leader is listening to God or wants to do what is right. So in 1 Thessalonians 5 and 21, it says, To prove all things, hold fast to that which is good. So then let us be subject to all things in the light of God's word. And just because we feel good about what someone of authority may tell us does not mean that it was necessarily from God. So we must always remember that God's word is the supreme authority by which we are able to judge all things. And also to leaders in responsibility, it's important for all leaders to be listening to God, to find out what he wants, to do his will, to refuse to compromise. So leaders, examine everything you do and make sure they're good for God and for the people. So let's make a declaration repeat this after me out loud dear heavenly father dear heavenly father i consciously weigh up every instruction 
I consciously weigh up every instruction against the truth of the word. Against the truth of your word. Irrespective of who is giving it. Irrespective of who you, who is giving it. I refuse to go contrary against your word. I refuse to go contrary against your word, which gives me life, light and direction. Which gives me life, light and direction and brings purpose to me. And brings purpose to me. For my steps are ordered by you. My steps are ordered by you and through the word and through your spirit and through the word and through your spirit. In Jesus' name, let it be. Amen. So let us go to 2 Corinthians eleven, thirteen to 15. The Amplified says it like this, For such men are false teachers, they are spurious counterfeits, they are deceitful workers, masquerading as apostles, special messengers of Christ the Messiah. And is it no wonder, for Satan himself is masquerading around as an angel of light. So it is not surprising if his servants also masquerade as ministers of righteousness but their end will correspond to their deeds. And then in Matthew 7 and verse 15, it says this, Beware of all false prophets who come to you dressed up as sheep, but inside they are devouring wolves. You will fully recognize them by their fruits. Do people pick grapes from thorns or figs? From thistles? No. So we all know that it says, by their fruits you shall know them. Even so, in the same way, every healthy sound tree bears good fruit worthy of admiration. But the poisonous, sticky, corrupt, decaying, worthless tree is only bearing bad, worthless, sickly and poisonous and noxious fruit. For a good tree cannot bear bad fruit and a bad tree cannot bear good fruit. So make a tree good and its fruit will be good. Or make a tree bad and its fruit will be bad. For a tree is recognised by clearly by its fruit. So a good man brings forth good things out of the good that's stored up in him and an evil man brings forth evil things out of the good stored up in him. That's Matthew 12 and 35. Watch out for false prophets, for they come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are ferocious wolves. Small is the gate, and narrow is the road that leads to life, and only few there be that find it. So the fruit of the light is found in all that is good, true and right. And now are inhabitants of Jerusalem and men of Judah. Judge between me and my vineyard. What more was there to do for my vineyard that I have not done in it? When I looked for it to yield grapes, why did it yield wild grapes? Why, I tell you what I'm going to do. I will remove the hedge of the vineyard and it shall be devoured. I will break down its walls 
and it shall be trampled down. In Jude 1 and 12 it says, These are hidden reefs at your love feasts, as they feast with you without fear. They are shepherds feeding themselves. They are waterless clouds swept along by the winds. They are fruitless trees in late autumn, twice dead and uprooted. But the wisdom from above is first pure, then peaceable, gentle, open to reason, full of mercy and good fruits, impartial and sincere, and a harvest of righteousness is sown in peace by those who make peace. So the last one is Philippians 1.11. So as to walk in a manner worthy of the Lord, fully pleasing to him, bearing fruit in every good work and increasing in the knowledge of God. Father, I pray over your words. They are all uh, incorruptible and indestructible. They will never fall to the ground. They'll never be changed. They're immutable, unchangeable. And so they're living and active, sharper than any two-edged sword, able to divide between the soul and the spirit. And they're a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. So let your word discern between what's soulish and what's fleshly and what's from you and what's not from you. And may we grow in discerning of spirits from now on and forevermore. I ask this in Jesus' name. And I release your blessing on everyone that's listening. Let it bear fruit and let us bear good fruit, Lord. For a bad tree cannot produce sound good fruit. Thank you, Lord. Be blessed till next time. Bye for now.